If you've never seen a teen movie, a superhero movie, an asylum set psychological thriller, Nightmare on Elm Street, or a single episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, then perhaps The New Mutants will be something of an eye-opening experience. Uh, so that comes from a review of The New Mutants movie, which I have not seen. Uh, I probably won't be watching it for a while, uh, but uh, I was interested in uh, public opinion on the movie. And this was the first uh, review that I saw, uh, and I don't even know who wrote that. I don't want this video to come across uh, as me calling that person out, although I am uh, using that as a springboard uh, for the topic of this video. Uh, but uh, first of all, uh, I do want to say uh, I find this uh, complaint that if you're familiar with all of these influences that the movie draws upon, that the movie is going to feel uh, boring like we've been there, done that. Uh, that's a very odd thing to say. I'm thinking of a small little movie that came out in the 1970s called Star Wars. Uh, it drew on just as many uh, wide and varied influences as it sounds like the New Mutants movie uh, does. Uh, you had anime like uh, Harlock Space Captain or Space Pirate. I uh, haven't seen it. Uh, then you had uh, things like Flash Gordon. Uh, you had Akira Kurosawa. You had the Westerns that were also inspired by Kurosawa. Uh, you had uh, samurai culture uh, from uh, the uh, you know feudal Japan uh, from history. All kinds of things that you wouldn't think would work well together. Uh, but George Lucas uh, drew on these things and created something very new. And uh, I'm just imagining somebody in the 1970s saying like, well, if you're familiar familiar with uh, those Flash Gordon comics from 40 years ago, then this is going to be a boring piece of crap. And uh, that just sounds really bizarre to me. Now, it's possible uh, that this person uh, went into this movie not wanting to watch it. Uh, recently, uh, whenever I watched uh, the Titanic and I talked about it with Connor Nielsen on a podcast, uh, I was not excited to watch that movie. I uh, did not think that I would enjoy it. And I want to say that's different than going into something wanting to hate it. Uh, not thinking that you will enjoy something is different than acting hoping that you hate it. Uh, and I don't know if this reviewer had either one of those things. It's entirely possible uh, that this reviewer has been aware of the New Mutants movie since the first trailer dropped three years ago, and then they were thinking, okay, uh, let's finally watch this movie and get it over with, and then I don't have to talk about it anymore. That could be it, or it could be that this reviewer genuinely uh, did not enjoy this movie, and then uh, in their mind, they felt like, oh, we've been here, done that. Uh, even though I don't feel like that is a very uh, fair complaint uh, to lodge against any uh, superhero story, or really any story in general. Like I said, uh, Star Wars has a dozen different influences, and I don't see anyone calling it out because it is inspired by Akira Kurosawa. Uh, if anything, I think people are more familiar with uh, stories like uh, Hidden Fortress and uh, The Seven Samurai because of Star Wars than they would have been if George Lucas uh, had never made that movie. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, specifically talking about superhero movies, Superhero is not a genre. Superhero is a stew that has hundreds of different genres all constantly transforming it and evolving it into something new. And this has been true since the birth of the superhero genre. And uh, most people generally uh, consider 1938, uh, when Superman first appeared in Action Comics issue 1, they consider that to be uh, the birth of the modern superhero. Uh, I would say you can make some arguments that it goes a little further back than that. Uh, the pulp novels of the uh, earlier 1930s uh, with characters like uh, The Shadow uh, and uh, The Avenger, who's later called Justice Inc. Uh, then you had The Phantom, uh, who was a newspaper comic character. Uh, and then you had uh, literary characters like, uh, I've been reading uh, A Princess of Mars by uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Uh, this isn't something that a lot of people would immediately spring forward and say, yeah, that's a superhero. Uh, but it's got a character who has abilities unlike anyone else on the planet. Uh, he is fighting uh, injustice where he sees it. Uh, these are some hallmarks of of uh, what people consider to be uh, mandatory uh, little check marks for the superhero genre. Uh, there's a novel that I read a couple years ago called The Scarlet Pimpernel, and that's definitely not something that people are going to say, oh yeah, totally a superhero, but uh, you have a master of disguise who keeps their identity a secret, and they are fighting a corrupt regime uh, in the area that they are in. Uh, and that is very similar to Batman Year One, uh, where you have Bruce Wayne uh, creating a secret identity for himself to make it easier uh, to combat injustices. And I don't think that we would have the Batman that we have today if we didn't have something like the Scarlet Pimpernel. Uh, also, Batman is inspired by characters like the Shadow and Zorro, and those characters are a little closer to the superhero genre uh, than something like the Scarlet Pimpernel, uh, but they're all also uh, pretty different from each other. And so uh, when uh, Bill Finger was creating the character of Batman, uh, he was drawing on uh, many different things to create something new. Uh, and so you have characters uh, that are all considered to be superheroes, but then they're all 
different enough from each other that I don't know why someone would say uh, this is a superhero story. And if you've seen a superhero story, then you're going to feel like you've been here, done that. Uh, Aquaman is just as much of a high fantasy story as it is a superhero story. Uh, Wonder Woman, you've got Greek mythology. Ghost Rider, uh, you have uh, Evil Knievel and the uh, motorcycle craze of the 1970s mixed with uh, horror movies like The Exorcist. And so you have something very new uh, that hadn't really been seen before. Uh, you've got all these characters. Uh, I talked about a novel uh, written back in the late 40s, early 50s called Slan. Uh, that was very much an inspiration uh, for the X-Men. And so the X-Men is a very different animal than the Fantastic Four. Uh, I would almost say the Fantastic Four don't count as superheroes. I would say they are science fiction explorers. But uh, at this point, we're just getting into semantics. But uh, every superhero that comes along uh, generally is going to be drawing from different influences. And that's what it sounds like the New Mutants movie is doing. Uh, I do think it's weird uh, that this uh, reviewer said, if you're familiar with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, an asylum set psychological thriller, and Freddy Krueger, uh, when was the last time we had a Freddy Krueger movie? Probably 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I think the last episode was like 2003. Uh, and yes, it has a little bit of a cult following now. Uh, I first came to the series about 10 years after it was finished, but uh, these things, they've been out of the public mind for a while now. So uh, I don't think that it's problematic for uh, Josh Boone uh, to look at old episodes of Buffy and say, yeah, I'm going to draw a little bit from that. I'm going to take a little bit of Freddy Krueger from the 1980s. Uh, I don't even know of any asylum set psychological thrillers. So uh, that doesn't even seem like it's enough of a genre on its own uh, to complain that the New Mutants movie is drawing on that as an influence. But it sounds like it's doing what all superhero movies do. Uh, when you have uh, the character Superman, uh, typically considered to be the first superhero, although again, I would argue with that, uh, but uh, Superman was very much inspired, uh, like I said, uh, by Edgar Rice Burroughs, a uh, character of John Carter. Uh, he has a significant strength and speed on the planet Mars that he did not have on Earth, very similar to how Superman has abilities on Earth that he would not have had on his home world. Uh, the uh, creators of Superman, uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, uh, they were looking at uh, lowbrow science fiction uh, novellas from the early 1930s. Uh, they were very heavily inspired uh, by newspaper comics. In fact, when they were creating the character of Superman, uh, they weren't creating him to be a comic book character. Uh, they wanted him to appear in newspapers. Uh, that was what uh, they aspired to. They saw that as a little bit of a higher uh, level of literature, I guess you could say, than a comic book. Uh, because before Action Comics issue 1, you didn't really have comic books as we know them. Uh, there were books that reprinted newspaper comics, uh, but you didn't have new material showing up in comic books before then. Uh, and then basically out of desperation to get their character published, uh, they submitted this character and uh, some stories that they had done as newspaper comics. They kind of cut them up and uh, reformatted them a little bit to fit as a comic book. And then they submitted it to uh, Major Malcolm Wheeler, Wheeler Nicholson uh, for uh, the birth of DC Comics at the time called National Comics. And so uh, that's uh, generally considered to be the first superhero. Uh, but even then, uh, they weren't looking at, okay, here is a genre we are creating. They were just doing something that was similar uh, to something else that they loved. Uh, the uh, Flash Gordon type science fiction stories and Buck Rogers, uh, those characters uh, are definitely influential on uh, Superman and those early stories. They just happened to set the character of Superman in present day Earth instead of on some alien world. Uh, but as you move forward, uh, these characters, uh, they started to draw from other influences. And so uh, the idea that, oh, this is just a typical superhero movie, I don't know if I can buy into that. Uh, even here lately with superhero movies, uh, you have Deadpool comes along, and that's a very successful R-rated superhero story, and then a whole lot of other uh, movies kind of start, okay, if he did it, then we can do that too. So then Logan is an R-rated superhero story. Uh, you had uh, The Suicide Squad. I, I think they wanted it to be R-rated. Uh, Birds of Prey is R-rated. So uh, every time uh, some new innovation happens in a superhero story, it could be a comic book or it could be a uh, movie like uh, the Deadpool movie, anytime a new uh, innovation comes along, it's going to be changing and evolving the superhero genre as we know it. Uh, so it's really odd to me uh, that someone would say, oh, this is uh, just like your other superhero stories that you've seen before. Uh, now again, I have not seen the New Mutants movie, and then once I see it, I may say, oh yeah, this feels like we've been there, done that. But right now, just looking at that critique, uh, I don't know if I can buy into that premise. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope this wasn't just a big rambling of a madman. I hope that this made a 
little bit of sense. Uh, this is something that's been in my mind for a while now, a long time, uh, that superheroes are not uh, one specific thing or genre, uh, that there's any number of things, uh, you know, Greek mythology, Norse mythology, uh, lowbrow science fiction, uh, high fantasy, all that stuff uh, feeds into uh, superhero fiction and uh, creates something very new. And it's not something that is necessarily going to stay the same for a very long time. Uh, sometimes you might look at superhero comics and you might say, like, oh, uh, this feels like uh, we've been in this holding pattern for a really long time. I've seen people say that. Uh, but then you still see new and interesting things being done with the genre. Uh, so uh, that's about it that I have for this video. I hope that uh, this made a little bit of sense. I hope that I wasn't just uh, babbling here. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, uh, I will see you guys in the future. Have a good one.